This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some extra functionality that you can use with data classes in Python, which will just make your experience much smoother. So to get started, we're going to import from data classes, first, of course, the data class, then we want to import a field and an init var. And I'll explain what all of this does in just a moment. But by now you should be quite familiar with how to create a data class. You use the at data class decorator, and then you add your class. In this example, we're going to be working with fruit. Now, first of all, we're going to create a fruit that has a name. And we also want to get the weight of the fruit in grams. So here I'm going to specify grams of type float and the cost per kilogram, which is also going to be of type float. But next, pretend you want to have a computed property such as the total value of this fruit. Because of course, each fruit might have a different weight, which is going to end up giving you a different total value. So here we have a total value of type float. And ideally, what we want to do is get the self.grams and divide that by 1000 and multiply that by self.cost per kilo. But we cannot do that here. Even if we remove self, we're going to get this warning that grams might be referenced before assignment. So what we need to do is create a placeholder. And to achieve this, we're going to use the field. And inside here, we can just say, okay, we will initialize this later by setting the initializer to false. And I will just add a comment here, calculate later. So we will not be passing this in to the initializer. We will be calculating it later using the post initializer. Anyway, right below, we're going to create this post initializer by referring to post init, and that will return none. And here we can refer to the fruit by typing in self dot total value is going to equal the self dot grams divided by 1000 times self dot cost per kilo. So now let's go ahead and test this out. So what I'm going to do here is create my main entry point, which returns none. And we're going to create some sample fruits, such as an apple of type fruit, and that's going to equal a fruit with the name of apple, it's going to weigh 2500 grams, and the cost per kilo is going to be three. And that can be euros, dollars, or whatever your local currency is, then we want to actually run this script. So I'm going to use if name is equal to main, and call main. But of course, it might make more sense to also print this apple. So we will print that and we will run our script. And what you should notice in the console is that we get a fruit named apple. The grams are set to 2.5 kilos with the cost being set to three. And then we get the total value, which was computed immediately after we used the initializer. And that's what the post initializer does. It initializes values after we use the initializer, which in data classes happens automatically. We don't have to write it explicitly like we do with normal classes. It happens under the hood when we create a data class. So that's pretty cool because now we can actually compute values after we've passed in the regular values. But next, I want to show you how we can use the init var with the post initializer. So next, under cost per kilo, we're going to add a new field. And this one's going to be called is rare, which is going to be an init var of type Boolean. And initially, it's going to be set to false. And init var just stands for initializer var. And immediately, you're going to notice that the post initializer is going to give us some syntax highlighting, that it should take all init only variables in the same order as they are defined. So here we can add is rare, which is of type Boolean, and now we can use it. And in this example, what I want to do is check if is rare, which means if is rare set to true, we're going to multiply the self dot total value by two because it's a rare fruit, which deserves to be treated differently or to have an elevated price. And I should remember to add a equals here because I want to effectively replace the total value with twice its value. Anyway, let's go back down and let's create another fruit, something that's much more luxurious, like a banana of type fruit, which is going to equal this fruit here called banana. We're going to say we have maybe 1.5 kilos. The price of a banana here is going to be 10. And we're going to set is rare to true. And we're going to print the banana right under the apple. So the next time we run this, 
we're going to get a super expensive banana. It's going to end up with the price of 30 euros. And that's because we decided to pass is rare into the initializer, which effectively doubled the price of our banana, even if the original cost per kilo was 10. But something else that could be quite smart to do, because this is quite confusing. If anyone reads this, they're going to see, hey, if the cost per kilo is 10 and the grams are 1,500, how the hell did we get to 30? So something else we're going to do real quick is say that the self dot price per kilo or cost per kilo is going to also be doubled. So the next time we run this, we can now effectively see that the cost per kilo went up. Otherwise, if we were to remove this initializer or this init var, it's going to be calculated as normal or it's going to calculate the price as normal. And one more data class feature that I want to share with you today is how you can add mutable types to your data class. Because sometimes you're going to want to add mutable types such as lists to your data class. And in this context, we want to add something called similar fruits, similar fruits, which will be of type list of string. And if you try to pass in a mutable type, you'll immediately get greeted with this error that a mutable default is not allowed. And code editors are actually quite smart with this. They already tell you exactly what you need to do. So here, what we're going to do is use the field once again and provide a default factory. And depending on which data type you're using, whether it's a dictionary or a list, you just need to pass it in here and it's going to do all that nasty work for us. So now we can actually pass in a mutable type with no problems, which means now we can also specify that we have an orange of type fruit and that this fruit which is an orange. And in this world, oranges are worthless. So they have, let's say a price of one, but now we can add those similar fruits. We can say similar to oranges are apples and I don't know, maybe a lemon. So now we can effectively use similar fruits with no problem. So we can actually pass in mutable types and down below, let's print this orange and once again, run our script. So at the bottom, we'll end up with something called orange. It has 500 grams. The cost per kilo is one. The similar fruits are apple and lemon, and the total value will be 0.5. And again, at any moment, if we want to say that this is a rare fruit, we can say is rare and set that to true. And at the end of the day, we will get a total value of one because the cost per kilo was effectively doubled. Anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know if you found all this information about data classes interesting. And if you have any information to add regarding data classes, please leave it in the comment section down below so other people can learn from it. But yeah, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.